Does anybody else get nervous and worry about electrocuting yourself with the voltage that's stored in the coil when you're going to service these things? I know I do. <laughs> What's up guys, my name is Andy, and on this video, I'm going to replace the ignition coil on my 1966 Mustang. So let's get started. For most of you guys, the coil will probably be located either right here, or maybe right here, or sometimes it's located up on top of the uh, intake manifold. Uh, I've even seen them on the, on the fenders. Um, but they're, they're kind of a very specific shape. Uh, you guys are going to be, you're, most of you guys are going to be familiar with what this is. And Really, um, unless you're making some major modifications to the motor and you're going to need a larger spark, uh, we typically don't need to do anything different than just get, you know, uh, an equivalent new unit than what was there for stock. Um, a lot of people use the yellow top is a, is a common one that these motors use. I'm going to use a Petronix uh, flamethrower. It's a 40,000 volt unit. Um, I'm not doing anything super crazy with this car, so there's no reason to throw 100,000 volts at this at the system. So I'm just going to just replace what I have here with the newer unit. Also, these things will wear over time. Well, not wear, but they'll wear out over time. And what you'll start to see, the, the first indicator is uh, maybe misfires or running poorly. And uh, you can test that by just putting a lead across the two terminals here and just testing the ohms of the of the coil and seeing if it's if it's below where it needs to be. Um, for mine, actually let's go, I'm gonna show you what the first thing you should do before you buy a coil. If you're just gonna buy a, a stock replacement, you're gonna wanna know what rating your, your, your coil is. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these leads off these terminals and we're gonna resist, we're gonna measure the ohm resistance of, these, of this coil. First thing you wanna do is we'll just go ahead and take the leads off of these two terminals. Um, just make sure that you remember which wires go to which side. Uh, so that you can put them back in the right spot when you're done. All right, on your on your multimeter, we're going to want to put it on the ohm setting, and we'll just set it right there. You should be able to see that. And what we're going to do is we're just going to test the uh, the resistance across these two leads and see what we get. So that says 1.4, 1.3. That's right, that's what we're looking for. It should be around one and a half, so that's telling me that this coil is starting to wear a little bit, it's starting to get a little older. Um, so when you go to oil order a new coil, you if you're just gonna do a stock replacement, a 1.5 ohm is what we're looking for. Uh, you could, There are three ohms, there's 1.5, I think I saw a 0.7 ohm coil, but if you're not gonna do anything crazy, just stick with the stock setup. So what I went with is a Petronix flamethrower coil. This is part number uh, 40011. It's the one and a half ohm. And it's a 40,000 volt system. And this is just a little bit better than, I guess, what's stock in terms of performance. Um, again, I'm not doing anything crazy with the car, so I don't need some crazy voltage. Uh, but I do want that one and a half ohm setup. And uh, let's see what else is in the box here. Okay, good. All right, so this is what we're gonna put in the car, and this really is a plug and play. I don't have to do any coating or, or resetting, and I'm just gonna go ahead and take the old one out of the car, put this one in its place, hook up the wires to the terminals, and plug the, the, the wire from here to the distributor back in, and then we're gonna be done. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So since we already have these terminals already off, uh, we can go ahead and just leave those off. I went ahead and taped them up, because I've got multiple wires here. I wanted to keep keep them together, and so, just pull this off, and then from here, I'm gonna undo this bracket and pull this coil out of this bracket and put the new one in the bracket.
All right, now that's done. Next step is uh, let's fire up the car and make sure everything works. All right, guys, so that's another easy part done. You know, while I got you here, now's a good time to talk about um, the grounding of our cars. Um, one of the things that you could do to improve the, the the electrical setup of your car is to add additional grounding wires. You know, I've got one that's going from the battery terminal to the motor, and then all the rest, the, I mean, the motor needs to be attached to the car for the rest of the grounds to work. Um, I have, you know, added a, I added a ground wire on this side, but I'm gonna add another one and I'm uh, on the back of the motor, and I'm also gonna add another wire on the terminal here, just going from here straight to the, to the chassis. Uh, again, to kind of give this, uh, this setup a better grounding option. The, the wire I'm using, I just had an old wire from another project from a long time ago just laying around the garage, so I'm just going to find a place in the back that I can attach this to the car and to the block, and then I've got a, another wire that I'm going to, just some old stereo wire back from the days when I was doing that stuff. Uh, I'm just going to put some terminals on here and just attach it on here and just attach it to the chassis probably wrap this in, in electrical tape just so that the blue's not sticking out. But um, yeah, just a, it's a good idea to, to, to do this stuff and to, to keep the grounding of the car in a happier state uh, so we're not relying on just this terminal from here to the motor and hoping that everything else is hooked up right. All right guys, that takes care of that. That is a new coil in my 66 Mustang. Uh, pretty much any of you guys can do that. Just remember to measure the terminals and see what ohm loading you have. And, uh, and then if you're not doing anything crazy, uh, you probably don't need anything more than the, than the 40,000 volts that that one's gonna supply. But I think that's even an upgrade over stock, so we're good there. Uh, the car runs, car's happy, so we're good there. And then adding those ground wires uh, will just make this car just a little bit happier. Uh, with life we've got the one on the side here i added that one there's one on the back coming off the valve cover over to the by the blower motor it's not as glamorous as the one that i showed you that i was making here but we've got one now going from the terminal to the chassis and then of course the stock one that's going from the terminal to the block all right guys that takes care of that if you like the video give me a thumbs up uh, and if you subscribe i appreciate it. it helps my channel out all right guys thanks for sticking with me we'll see you in the next one